In our quest to uncover the hidden truths about who we are as a people, we must consider that ancient knowledge that has us scratching our heads in bewilderment at times must have come from an advanced past. The Sumerians, for example, depict a planet that has long been lost to us. In fact, these people not only depict but also describe the planet referred to as Nibiru, home of the Anunnaki, in fantastic detail. Though some early translations of the text proved inaccurate, the overall view remains and the inaccuracies are from the time and scale of the planet rather than it actually existing. For example, the early translations describe a 3,600 year old orbit when in fact that orbit is closer to 20,000 years as hypothesized by Caltech. The ancient Sumerians described the home of the gods, a failing planet with a burning moon for a sun with a highly elliptical orbit. Some refer to it as a comet-like planet that enters the solar system at regular yet massive gap intervals and wreaks utter chaos to the solar system as it approaches the sun, causing cataclysmic occurrences everywhere. In the past, it is known that where the asteroid belt is today was once a planet and that was smashed to bits by an ancient collision, probably from the approach of this planet, same with Uranus. Uranus is on its side as a planet. This suggests overwhelmingly that something is affecting its very being. The fact it's on its side may be the result of a dense planetary system that is perturbing the massive planet and its entire system of moons and rings. Wait till you hear this. For years, astronomers looked at Uranus with amazement as what they were observing were the unusual signs of an unsteady orbit. Uranus has a wobble and the cause must be something incredibly dense with enormous gravitational pull up to 20 times that of the Earth. In 1834, German astronomer Peter Andres Hansen allegedly suggested to a colleague that two planets were needed to explain oddities in the motion of what was then the farthest known planet, Uranus, oddities that led to the discovery of Neptune in 1846. Two years later, French astronomer Jacques Bonnet claimed that Neptune also stumbled along its orbit, hinting that a hidden planet must have been causing Neptune to speed up and slow down as it ran around the Sun. Another anomaly regarding Neptune is the fact that it is not frozen compared with Uranus. Yet, Neptune is farther from the Sun. This would suggest that at the other end of the spectrum, there must be another heat source that is keeping Neptune from freezing. And indeed, if Sumerian accounts are correct, and this wandering planet has a sustainable atmosphere with its own heat source, then maybe Nibiru is having these types of effects. In the early 1900s, Boston-born polymath Percival Lowell got into the planet hunting game. It's not clear if Lowell was the first person to use the phrase Planet X, but he certainly popularized it. Lowell calculated where Planet X should be based on observations of Uranus and Neptune. 13 years after Lowell died in 1916, American astronomer Clyde Tombow picked up the torch, using Lowell's calculations as a guide. Tombow's systematic observation led him to Pluto in 1930, close to where Lowell predicted Planet X would be. Another anomaly regarding Uranus is the fact that it orbits the Sun in a separate direction from the other planets. It is thought this could be a direct result of the planet being on its side, but no one has explained this phenomenon at all. The rings of the frozen world are also incredibly anomalous. Apart from it looking like a giant cutting tool as observed by Voyager 2, we can't see the rings from any of Earth's ground-based telescopes. We know, however, from Hubble observations that Uranus has outer and inner rings, and get this, scientists can't understand what materials they are made from. Brian Cox states, the rings of Uranus are not like any material we have ever encountered before. The crazy thing is that two moons seem to be orbiting the rings. In fact, this is so anomalous that the shepherd moons seem to be somehow maintaining them, leading to alternative theories regarding what they actually are. Perhaps they have artificial origins. Now get this, the official explanation of what these are 
are as follows. A shepherd moon, also known as a herd moon or a watcher moon, is a small natural satellite that clears a gap in planetary ring material or keeps particles within a ring contained. The name is a result of the fact that they limit the herd of the ring particles as a shepherd. Due to their gravitational effect, they pick up particles and deflect them from their original orbits through orbital resonance. Does that sound like a natural occurrence to you guys? The fact of the matter is that the more we discover, the more we are noticing that what we assume to be a true account as to how the solar system works was in fact just more inaccurate guesswork based on the understanding we had at the time. Nowhere does it say this can't be challenged because nowhere is this presented as fact. The more we learn, the more we realize we really just don't know yet. The question of Nibiru existing is one of those questions that seems to have all the evidence necessary to prove it to be real. All we are lacking is the modern observation that confirm what the ancients seemingly already knew and the near 300 years search for the elusive planet X continues to fascinate us in modern times. Uranus is on its side, so is its entire system. Neptune has another heat source other than the Sun, and the ancient Sumerians tell us in no uncertain terms that this thing is real and it's even inhabited. The Anunnaki are actually said to be our creators. They came to the Earth to mine gold deposits so they could release this gold into the planet's atmosphere to protect it from the Sun. It's astonishing, guys, and it appears to be true. Perhaps answers can be found in Peru, where there are ancient signs of activity on the mountain tops. Thousands of man-sized holes are carved into the barren rock. These strange holes stretching for a mile over uneven mountain terrain were here for so long that the local people have no idea who made them or why. Funny thing is, no one really saw the big picture until the area was seen from the air. It does look like a search was here in remote times. Maybe they were prospect holes for gold. They are close to the Nazca Plateau, where there appears to be an effort to signify the return of something. Maybe this is where the Anunnaki mined their gold. Maybe, just maybe. That's all from us for the moment, guys. You can let us know below what you are thinking about. Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.